August 26, 2020 marks the 100th anniversary of women winning the right to vote. The Seneca Falls Convention of 1848 launched the movement for women's suffrage, the right to vote in political elections. They passed the Declaration of Sentiments, modeled on the Declaration of Independence. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men and women are created equal. The history of mankind is a history of repeated injuries and usurpations on the part of man toward woman having in direct object the establishment of an absolute tyranny over her. Many early suffrage leaders grew up with Iroquois neighbors. The suffrage movement was fueled by indigenous traditions of gender equality that go back a thousand years. Abolition leaders like Frederick Douglass attended Seneca Falls and brought their experiences to the struggle. The suffrage movement faced powerful opposition. Anti-suffrage editorials, lectures, and demonstrations met the activists everywhere they went. Cruel cartoons showed how terrified people were of a world where women dared to leave the domestic sphere. Susan B. Anthony and Elizabeth Cady Stanton fought for 50 years. Despite their efforts, at the time of their deaths, only six states allowed women to vote. But the torch could not be extinguished. Leaders Mary Church Jarrell and Ida B. Wells gave a voice to black women working towards suffrage. Alice Paul took up the fight, bringing new radical tactics into the movement. She led a picketing campaign outside the White House, the first time this strategy was ever used. The picketers were arrested and beaten. They went on hunger strike and were force-fed by prison guards. The sufferings of these women began to sway public opinion. And with the endorsement of President Woodrow Wilson, it finally looked like the amendment to guarantee federal voting rights could pass. In June of 1919, Congress passed the 19th Amendment and sent it to the states for ratification. 36 of the 48 states had to ratify for women to win the right to vote. With 35 states on board by August 1920, all eyes turned to the vote in Tennessee. State Congressman Harry Byrne was planning to vote against women's suffrage his mother wrote him, Dear son, hurrah and vote for suffrage, and don't keep them in doubt. I've been waiting to see how you stood, but have not seen anything yet. Don't forget to be a good boy. At the last moment, he changed his opposing vote, and Tennessee became the final state needed to pass the 19th Amendment. After 70 years of struggle, women all over the United States now had the right to vote. This victory was only the first step. It took four more years for Native Americans to win the right to vote, and many more till they could reliably vote in every state. Asian Americans were guaranteed voting rights more than 30 years later, in 1952. Across the South, black voters were barred from voting by poll taxes, literacy tests, and intimidation until the 1965 Voting Rights Act. Winning the right to vote was only the beginning of the struggle. The suffragette leaders passed the torch to the next generation of trailblazing women who set their sights on the boardroom, the courts, universities, the military, Congress, and the White House. Representation at all levels of decision-making is necessary to ensure women share in the inalienable rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Women have kept the torch burning as they break barriers one by one. This year, the 100th anniversary of women's suffrage, we celebrate the triumphs of women who were first. Madam C.J. Walker, the first female self-made millionaire. Jeanette Rankin, the first woman in Congress. Annie Grimes, the first bond saleswoman. Edith Wharton, the first woman to win a Pulitzer Prize. Genevieve Klein, the first female federal judge. Patty Carraway, the first woman in the Senate.
Frances Perkins, the first female cabinet secretary. She served as FDR's Secretary of Labor. In 1932, Amelia Earhart was the first woman to fly solo across the Atlantic. In the 1940s, women went to war as factory workers, baseball players, pilots, and combat nurses. Women in wartime shattered stereotypes about what kind of work they could do. Marion Donovan patented the first disposable diaper. Jacqueline Cochran, the first woman to break the sound barrier, flying faster than any woman before. In 1959, Ella Fitzgerald was the first woman to win a Grammy. Patsy Mink, the first Asian woman in Congress. First woman to buy a seat on the New York Stock Exchange. First woman to run in the Boston Marathon. I'm gonna finish this race on my hands and my knees if I have to, because nobody believes that I can do this. And suddenly I realize, you know, if I don't finish this race, then everybody's gonna believe women can't do it and that they don't deserve to be here and that they're incapable. Shirley Chisholm, the first black woman in Congress. In 1972, she became the first black candidate for president. I stand before you today as a candidate for the Democratic nomination for the presidency of the United States of America. Catherine Graham, the first female Fortune 500 CEO, led the Washington Post through the Watergate scandal. Barbara Jordan was the first, and still only, black female governor. First news anchor woman on national television. First woman to race at the Indy 500. The women's movement flared to new life in the 1960s and 70s. Women finally earned the right to take out a loan without a man's signature. Activists fought for commercially available contraceptives and a ban on pregnancy discrimination so that women could finally control their own bodies. The main demand, of course, is equal, equal rights. Equal rights to have a job, to have respect, to not be viewed as a piece of meat. Equal rights to get into graduate programs, to get into schools, to training programs. We're the bottom third of the employment in terms of pay. We represent nonetheless 34% of the workforce, yet we're the first to be laid off and the last to be hired. There aren't frivolous demands at all. We just want what men have had all these years. Sandra Day O'Connor, the first woman appointed to the Supreme Court. First American woman in space. First woman inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Oprah Winfrey, the first black woman to host a nationally syndicated talk show. She now leads a media empire and is the first black female billionaire. I'm Oprah Winfrey, and welcome to the very first national Oprah Winfrey show! <laughs> Darla Moore, first woman on the cover of Fortune magazine. First woman and first Latina to be Surgeon General. May Carol Jemison, first black woman in space. First female president of an Ivy League school. First woman to serve as a U.S. Attorney General. First woman to win the James Beard Award for Outstanding Chef in America. First woman to chair a Global 100 law firm. Somehow and in some way in the last 50 years, enough women were able to find within themselves the courage and willingness to push through their own fears to be all that they can be. In 1997, Madeleine Albright became the first female Secretary of State. Just remember, there's a special place in hell for women who don't help each other. Nancy Pelosi, first female Speaker of the House, the most senior position in the federal government to be achieved by a woman. First Republican woman and first black woman to be Secretary of State. First female four-star Army General. First female NBA coach. The Supreme Court now includes three female justices, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, Sonia Sotomayor, and Elena Kagan. But Ginsburg is aiming higher. There will be enough female oh. justices on the Supreme Court when there are. You know what the answer is, when there are nine, of course. <laughs> Hillary Clinton, the first woman to win a major party nomination and the first to win the popular vote for president. Ursula Burns, first and only black woman to lead an S&P 500 company. First and only woman to win the Oscar for best director. 
First female chair of the Federal Reserve. First woman to join the Blue Angels. The founder of Spanx, Sarah Blakely, the youngest female self-made billionaire, and the first woman to join the Gates Buffett Giving Pledge. First female CEO of a major car company. First female tech billionaire. First female referee for the NFL. First female CEO of a major US oil company. First visibly pregnant woman to appear on the cover of a business magazine. First female president of the New York Stock Exchange. First Native American women in Congress. First Muslim women in Congress. First female coach in the Super Bowl. In 2019, the first all-female spacewalk proved that the sky is no longer the limit for what women can achieve. Recent laws have increased women's representation in corporate leadership. When women gain wealth and power, they influence change. Women in finance. Women in finance. Let me say that one more time. Women in finance. There's something to be said about, you know, money and power. Having power over money how decisions are made in terms of allocation of resources and hiring and all the other leadership decisions that happen at the corporate level and in the world of finance is so key. And in my opinion, it is one of the last frontiers that we haven't really quite penetrated. California now requires at least one woman on every corporate board. It just makes good business sense. Women employees at Salesforce led the company to commit to equal pay. In 2019, for the first time, there was one woman on every board of every Fortune 500 company. In 2020, Goldman Sachs announced they will not take companies public without a woman on the board. The board must have at least one person who is not white, male, or straight. Despite 100 years of struggle, in some key areas, progress has stalled. Women are 51% of the population, but still represent less than 25% of political leaders and only 18% of C-suite positions. There are still 20 states that have never had a female governor. After decades of activism on equal pay, women still earn only 80 cents on the dollar compared to men. Since 1963, when we passed the Equal Pay Act, we have been talking about the fact women are not paid equally for equal work. Fast forward to the year of our Lord, 2019, and women are paid 80 cents on the dollar, black women 61 cents, Native American women 58 cents, Latinas 53 cents. I'm done with the conversation. So, how can we move forward? Let us gladly join the fight. Let our legacy be about planting seeds in a garden you never get to see. Imagine a world where women are represented everywhere on currency, street names, and statues. New York has few statues of historic women. Currently in Central Park, all statues of women are fictional characters. Finally, this year, a new statue will be unveiled of Elizabeth Cady Stanton, Susan B. Anthony, and Sojourner Truth. The first woman to create three hit shows with more than 100 episodes each, Shonda Rhimes is now one of the most powerful executives in television. Think of that. Heads up, eyes on their target, running, full speed, rabbity be damned, towards the thick layer of glass that is the ceiling. Equal pay, equal pay, equal pay. Running, full speed, and crashing. How many women had to hit that glass before the first crack appeared? So that when it was my turn to run, it didn't even look like glass anymore. The wind was already whistling through it. I always could feel it on my face, and I could pick my spot and call my target and run. And when I finally hit that ceiling, I think it just exploded into dust. My sisters who went before me had already handled it. No cuts, no bruises, no bleeding. Making it through the glass ceiling to the other side was simply a matter of running on the path created by every other woman's footprints. You can help the torch keep burning. Urge your company to pay women equally. Support women candidates. Invest in female-led companies. Give women visibility. Share your story. And take the time to mentor a young woman. The Financial Women of San Francisco, the first association of its kind in the country, was founded in 1956 to advance equality for women in finance. Through mentoring and scholarships, they help develop the next generation of women 
who will be first. Yes, we'll rally once again, singing a blessed song for 